So behind me is the huge Sansuna dolmen. You can just see the size of the capstone. It's got to be something like, what, 20 feet wide? Um, it's about five, four to five feet thick in places. It must weigh in excess of 40 or 50 tons. It kind of reminds me of the North Salem Dolmen in New York State, uh, the way it's got the three or four, um, you know, stones that are holding it up with the main capstone resting, this time sort of fallen at an angle on top. What's fascinating about this is the fact that it was said to have been dropped here by the giant goddess Sansuna, who was also responsible for, for building Gigantia uh, with the great megalithic temple uh, exactly one kilometer southeast of here. That's really, I did, some, uh, I did some work on this online um, with some geodesy and found that the distance between here and the main temple at Gigantia is exactly one kilometer, 1,000 meters and it's actually in line with it. It's, it's almost like if you draw a line between here and Gigantia, it faces the winter solstice sunrise alignment exactly, and it's exactly one kilometer away from here, southeast of here. The other thing is if you continue the line, it goes right to the dolmen, which is 18 kilometers away, at Bugiba, which is in the, the dolmen in the Dolmen Resort Hotel in St. Paul's Bay. So we have some geodesy here between Gozo and Malta, as though the sites are connected, all in a great winter solstice alignment, heading southeast. So the fact that this happens here is a remarkable feat in itself, not only raising a stone this big and building Gigantia and all the other temples, but they were aligning them over great distances. So it's really interesting that you find connections between two different islands and it also goes through Camino as well. Um, and you could say it's a ley line, you could say it's a ley alignment going between these different islands. The other thing about this is the fact that you can't get in. I had to climb over a fence, I didn't film that bit. So you have to get permission if you want to get in, but you can, if you're thin, not like me, you can actually squeeze through the gap. I had to kind of go over the top. Um, it's right on the edge of a ridge here. Gigantia is more inland, uh, southeast of here, obviously. And uh, we're gonna have a good look at this because I think this is one of the most fascinating sites here on Gozo, especially as it had giant connections with it as well, with the goddess Sansuna. So I love the fact that there's a giant goddess taking strides across the landscape. And this is one of the stones she dropped on the way to Gigantia. And so does this talk about, like we find in Britain, like a ley line or an alignment between sites where the giants move from site to site in great strides. And apparently she was carrying this stone in an apron or on her back, or even her son was or daughter. And when they dropped it, they eventually reached uh, Gigantia. I'll just give you a bit more detail about it. With Gigantia, uh, she's famous for building that because obviously the stones are so big they kind of resorted to the idea that giants may have built it. But there might be some truth in it because you look at some of the size of these stones, they're incredibly large. And there were goddesses, and statues of goddesses and worship and cults of goddesses all over the island of Gozo and Malta. So this just shows you the main dolmen from the side. This is the main capstone. You can see how thick it is. That is at least four to five feet thick, as well as being 20, 25 feet long. So it must estimate it to be at least 40 tons. It's certainly one of the bigger stones, one of the bigger dolmens here on Gozo. And we're just looking at the dolmen here from the southeast, and you can see just the bulk of the main uh, top part of the dolmen, which has fallen down. It is absolutely huge. It's absolutely gigantuan, which would make sense that it was built by giants. And you can see like the side of it here with the, the upright underneath it holding it up. Why it fell down or how it fell down, I don't know. But even in the old photos, it does look um, like it's fallen. And there's some stones here in the grounds as well. It looks like there's a great slab going from roughly the wall, which is in the main road next to it, Going all the way along here is these stones here. And that whole raised area there looks like it's actually another stone. Maybe this was actually a temple, but you can see them here as well, just in the, in the grass here. So there could have been either an avenue or there could have been some kind of circular temple here as well. It almost looks like a cut mark there. So this has just been left to rot really. They don't let anyone in here, have to climb over the fence. And under there, you can see one of the stones that holds it up. Just the sheer size of that is just remarkable, really, when you look at it. 
you get close up to it. Incredible. So you can just see the magnitude of the dolmen here and these are the stones that are currently holding it up. But you can see stones underneath it as well. It's very rough hewn limestone bedrock. But these ones are the surviving ones that held it up. I wonder how many of these there were. This really does look like one piece of rock. It is absolutely gigantic. You can see the edge of it there, going all the way here. Mm -hmm. 